Hey guys, welcome to Grand Tiger Gaming, where I cover Gran Turismo and other driving games. Today, we're going to take an in-depth look at the race UI. Don't feel discouraged if it seems overwhelming. It is a lot to take in at first, especially if you're a new player. And even for intermediate players, there's probably still stuff that you're not exactly sure what it is. So I just want to quickly walk through each element and then stay tuned to the end because I'm also going to pick out what I think are the five most important parts of the race UI. So let's get right into it. So I'm going to pull up a chart of the race UI for Gran Turismo and I'm going to quickly walk through these one by one. There's a lot to go through here, so I want to keep it pretty brief and I will save more of my notes for the top five UI elements at the end of this video. So starting at number one, we have the position and number of cars. So this is your position and yeah, how many cars are in your race. Number two is the current and total laps. Number three, obvious, but it's the rear view mirror which is very helpful if you're in bumper cam because the other reviews have their pros and cons, but this one's definitely, I would say the best uh, in terms of just competitive racing. Number four is the track map. It's just an outline of the track you're on. Number five are your lap times. Number six is your final lap indicator. Number seven is the current lap time and the best lap time. Number eight is the position chart, which is also very important. We'll get into that later. Number nine is the fastest lap notice. So it just lets you know who's uh, currently holding the fastest lap and what time that is. Number 10 is the total time of the race. Number 11 is the braking suggestion if you have the brake indicator assist on. Number 12 is the time difference and best lap. Number 13 is the steering angle and gear change notice. Number 14 is the cars, speed, gear, and blindside alert. Number 15 is the speedometer, fuel indicator, odometer, and handbrake. Number 16 is your brake pressure. Number 17 is the multifunction display. I mostly keep it on the radar, but this is another one we will dig into more later. Number 18 is the tachometer boost and lights. Number 19 is the throttle indicator. Number 20 is your equipped tires, their health, and then there's a outline on each of them to let you know when it's heating up and taking damage. Number 21 are your driving assists like ABS and auto. Number 22 are more driving assist like traction control, stability, and counter steer. Number 23 is your overtake indicator. I don't use this too much, but I think it might apply more to certain cars, maybe formula cars. And number 24 is the boost indicator. All right guys, so I hope that wasn't too boring. Now we're gonna get into what I consider the top five UI elements. Let me know if you agree or disagree, but yeah, let's get right into it. The first of the five most important UI elements is the rear view mirror. This one seems obvious, but it is very helpful to have the rear view mirror to know if a car is trying to overtake you or you see them closing the gap behind you and you want to defend. Seems very obvious, but it's pretty important to use the bumper cam so that you have this on. All right, so the second most important UI element that I wanna cover is your lap time indicator to the right. This is something that I didn't pay too much attention to when I first started playing, but I really find the lap time chart helpful. Basically, I like to use it to compare against my qualifying times to make sure I'm getting like within that ballpark to know that I'm racing my best. And if I'm not, if it's a little bit slower, if it's a little bit faster, it's helpful to know how that's going on because in the heat of the race, you might realize that when you look at the chart, you're racing three, four or five seconds slower than what you could be doing. So you know that you need to sort of tighten up and figure out what you're doing wrong to get closer. You know, even if you're having a hard time climbing positions, you should at least be hitting close to your qualifying times during the race. All right, so the next very important part is the position chart. The position chart's good to know who you're racing against, but it's also helpful to know that you have the time difference of the car in front of you and the car behind you. So the bigger the gap there is, the more you're relaxed you can race and possibly drive better laps because you are more relaxed. They start getting within a second gap of you. You probably wanna start being more careful and start defending. So it's good to know how close a car is in front of you or behind you and just keep an eye on if they're closing that gap or if that gap's widening so that you can uh, just drive more relaxed. And it also lets you know how far you are from the person in first, which can also be helpful because sometimes you might be in eighth place, but you're actually racing really well because you're still within three seconds of the top player. And 
Sometimes players mess up, even if accidents just happen. And even though you're in eighth place, sometimes you might climb all the way to pole position at times. So it's important to also have this on the red label for the position chart. All right, so the fourth of the top five UI elements is the car speed, blindside, and alert slash shift indicator area here. This area is really important because aside from the obvious things like knowing your car's speed and what gear you're in, there's also some other functionality that's helpful, like having a blindside alert. It tends to blink to the left and the right, and you kind of get like some vignetting when a car is very, very close to you in your blind spot, or they're starting to make some light contact with you. This is very helpful to know, and it's also helpful to have the shift indicator on top. You can also listen to your transmission in the engine to kind of feel it out, but it's also nice having this uh, visual alert. And then also tie in the steering angle on top, which is helpful for review. During the race, it's not so helpful, but it's nice that it is there. It's the last and very important part of the top five UI elements is the multi-function display. The multi-function display is really cool because it has a map of the track. So this is really helpful, especially if you're learning a track, kind of keep an eye when there's sharp turns coming up. There's also a radar, which I think is the most important part. So we'll come back to that. There's also a lap time chart. There's a few other functions too. There's brake balance if brake balance is on. There's a dynamic traction control adjustment. So if you want to raise or lower your traction control. Yeah, so the multi-function display is very helpful. Um, like I said earlier, I tend to keep it on the radar. It's just helpful to have extra awareness of your position and the position of the cars around you and how close they are because it gets really granular of how small it appears on the radar. So you can really kind of gauge better how close or how far a car is from you or what position they're trying to take. All right, guys, I know that was a lot of information. I really hope it was helpful. If you guys liked it, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe. I have more guides on the way, guides on how to get faster. I know there's a lot of awesome YouTubers who have specific daily track guides and all that stuff. So I highly suggest you guys watch their content. They have a lot of really great information. The way that I'm personally approaching this right now is I'm doing more general guides right now, but going a little bit more in depth. So. If you guys are interested in more guides that will help you get faster over time, I'm also trying to get faster and just share my knowledge with you guys. So subscribe if you want to stay in tune with that. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you guys. Grand Tiger out.